Hi everybody, this is the second part in the two part video series on how to make a simple horror game like Jim's Computer. If you haven't seen the first part, please go back and watch it. It's in the card above. Hey everybody, Luckman here, back at it again with another simple horror game tutorial. This will be the last one, we're just gonna add on to the story and we're gonna make the game a little bit creepier. To start off with making the game a little bit creepier, um, I like to make the game first person. If you don't want to, you can completely skip this step. So to make the game first person, you're going to want to click on starter player. And then you're going to want to scroll down to camera and then camera mode. Instead of classic, it should be on lock first person. So lock first person sets it to first person. So we hit play. Uh, as you can see, if the day one will go away, we are locked in first person. Now, but there's a problem, as you can see, the the text is uh, under our mouse. So we're just going to move the text over. So if we just go and make the text label visible, uh, or if we, uh, no, if we make it visible, where's the visible? Okay, so we could just drag the text label up a little bit. And it will look fine. And then we could go back into auto scale light here, which was used in the previous tutorial. And we can scale and scale. And then let's just test the scaling real quick. In studio, as you can see, looks pretty good. Set it back to nothing. And then let's hit play. So, looks pretty good. Um, by the way, I believe you can disable the cursor, but we're not going to be doing that for the sake of this tutorial. If you want to do that, you can. Um, so, uh, yeah, let's go and add on to the story and add some more scripted elements. So, after the cutscene that we made in our last one, they go back to bed. So we will go ahead and go all the way up to our touching bed and we will add a new else if. So we'll do we'll add else if stage dot value equals I guess it was six after they look at the thing. Yeah, it changes it to six. So we will do stage dot value equal one thousand, of course. We do frame dot background transparency equals zero label.text. Actually, we will not have label.text for right now because it won't be day three yet. So then let's get some static sounds. So let's just go here and search over static. Uh, or let's do TV static. TV static. Oh, you know what? Let's look up white noise. My bad. That's probably what it needs. Okay, I found a good static sound, so we're going to call this static1. And then we are going to get um, a image, so we're going to get static. So then we're going to go to the screen, and we are going to put a script inside this default. And so, okay, so let's go back to the handler here. And let's set the stage dot value to 1001 to represent just to tell the thing that basically we're not able to trigger any of the other events but this thing will happen so we're going to do while game dot workspace dot stage dot value uh, a equals 1001 it will do the following so we're going to do script dot parent dot um, texture equals and then we're gonna get just some static. I'm gonna paste it in here, and we're just gonna do this. And then wait one, or we'll do wait 0 0.5, and we'll get three static textures just to kind of make it look like the TV is actually like flickering. Oh, this is we already used this one.
There we go. So then we will do label.txt and we'll say what's happening. Okay, I kind of messed this up a little bit. I, I rushed it a little bit too much. So we're going to do weight 0 0.5 here and then we're going to set the frame.background transparency to 1. And I didn't even, I forgot to play the sound as well. So we're going to do um, uh, game.workspace.static. One and then we're gonna play it and then we're gonna make static one loop as well and then when it decides to stop so game dot workspace dot static one stop all right so this part I've made is a little buggy so I'm gonna go ahead and fix it up real quick so it doesn't really stay uh, around for too long enough so I'm gonna make it to where the whole thing lasts six seconds for some reason the decal thing it doesn't quite work so we're going to make the script disabled right and then we're going to change this to a while true do instead of what it was before and then we're going to go back to the handler and we're going to do game.workspace.screen.decal.script.enabled equals true and then after the six seconds we're going to we're going to make it false and we're going to make the static stop as well. So we're going to change it to stop. And there we go. This should work much better now and flow much better. Okay, let's test that. Also, I forgot to set it tonight, so we're going to do that real quick. Uh... We're going to do game.lighting.clocktime uh, equals 23. And then we're going to set it back to 12. Then we're going to also going to add a label.txt here. And he's going to say, I'm going to go outside. And we also forgot to change the stage out value back to something actually applicable. So after it turns to day three, we're going to set the stage out value to seven. So I think I'm going to make this the final scene. So you walk outside and go touch the grass. So if stage.value equals 7, then stage.value equals, and then we'll just set it to a random number because this is the final this is the final thing. Label.text equals, oh wait, I didn't mean to do that. Label.text equals, something is off and then we're going to wait two seconds label dot uh, text color equals uh, uh, color three dot from rgb and we're going to set it to red i uh, i messed that up red okay text we're just gonna make him we're just gonna make this other character say i agree and then we're gonna make like a uh... so if something is off he says i agree then it waits like 1.5 seconds and then it's uh and then we'll do uh, frame dot background transparency equals is it it's it is one and then we will set the text color back to white and you could do like a little credit sequence, label.txt. I'm going to call this game Dan's New House. Wait, 2.5, label.txt, made by, oh, my hammer was here, inspired by, uh, what is it? I keep forgetting the name of the game. It's Jim's Computer, right? Inspired by Jim's Computer, and then... Wait. And then we'll do game dot players dot. Would it be so? We'll actually add a new uh, remote event to replicated storage, and we'll call it game end. So then we'll do game dot replicated storage dot game end. Fire all clients, and then we'll go back to the scene handler here. 
and we'll do game dot replicated storage dot uh, game end dot on client event connect function and we'll do game dot players dot local player and then we'll do kick and the message could be thanks for playing so now i'm going to play through the whole game and uh we can talk about it a little bit as we go through so apparently it expected a brick color so let's just uh, do this so text color three is what we wanted to do here my bad let's go back and try that again So I messed up at the end. The frame background transparency is supposed to be zero, I guess. So yeah, that's the whole game. The game is going to be in the description down below. It is uncopy locked and you could play it for yourself. Um, actually, there is one thing I want to do real quick. I want to go to the door. And I want it. I want to check if uh, game.lighting. Uh, clock time is less than uh 22 just so they can't actually leave the room at night um so there you go guys that is my little game uh that is how you make a game like um jim's computer um i hope you enjoyed and and I, hopefully this tutorial taught you more than just how to make a game like jim's computer but also taught you a little bit about game development so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed if you did please subscribe it means a lot and uh yeah bye bye